welcome to Light Sun Church. We are the body of Jesus Christ gathering in Nairobi Umoja One Estate. Our services are every Sunday morning with prayers from 8 a.m., Bible study 9 a.m., and a worship service at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Light Sun Church, spiritually transformed people. to 
before him and worship. We need you, Jesus. Hosanna in the highest. You conquered the grave, Lord Jesus. We adore and worship you. Just raise your voice to him.
Father, we thank you for your grace and for your anointing that is upon each and every one of us. We thank you for your grace that we enjoy each and every day. Lord, be exalted, be magnified in this church, be exalted in this place as we continue even in this service, O oh God. We thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. Come on, somebody say a big, better amen. God is good. And he is always faithful. He is faithful to what he has said. He is faithful to everything that he has said. If he has said it and it concerns you, then he is faithful to do it. Hallelujah. Let's just uh, get into a time of just giving. Welcome to this service today. Today is our, our 56th day of this great, day, great season of fasting and prayer. And we believe that as we do this, the Holy Spirit is leading us into another realm in His presence. We are moving into another level. We are stepping up into Him. And uh, we just want to invite you to get into a time of just giving together with us. There is, there is a, a, a link that is on our Facebook page that you can go there and you can also give. Also in this, in this uh, lower thirds that we have here, there is a... Uh, a, a provision for you. There's, there's also this, 
these tags that you can follow on M-Pesa, on PayPal, and you can engage and give. When you become generous in the things that God has given you, you become just a, a, a temporal owner of what God has given you. There is a statement that they say that in the kingdom of God, owners are robbers. If you own something, then you're a robber. Everything that we have don't belong to us. Everything that we have belong to him. So when we come to give in his presence, we are giving back what belongs to him. That is what a tithing, a tithing relationship with God is. We are giving him back what he has given to us. The government does not give you and then they take task, the tax from you. They take the tax before they give you. But God gives you and then he demands the 10%. So if you are out there, it's just a time for you to, to accept, uh, you to, 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 to honor God with your tithe. If you're a member of Lightstone Church, it's a time for you just to honor God with your tithing and your giving. Let's just pray as you give today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your people as they take this time in, and participate in the in honoring you through their substances even in these hard times lord we pray that you you be their god and you you touch them in jesus name and we pray and believe somebody say amen giving is a partnership with god when we worship him with what he has blessed us with we make possible the expansion of his kingdom in our community 2 Corinthians 9.11, we will be enriched in every way to be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. At Lights and Church, we give in the spirit of generosity to God. There is nothing we need he has withheld from us. You can participate with us right now in worshiping God through your substances. This is possible through our Lipa 9 Pesa by Goods account number 590631. Thank you for your generosity. God you moves his plan forward through his provisions. There are things that God has, 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 has provided in your life. There are places that God led you to so that he might preserve his plan for your life. They were not the best places that you could have been at. They were not the bless, best opportunities you could have had in life. But God even used those uh, bad opportunities to preserve, to preserve his plan in your life. Hallelujah. You look at the, the story of Abraham. Abraham, the, the, the Bible says that there was famine in the land and God led him right into Egypt. Egypt was not the best God had for him, but because God had to preserve his plan for Abraham, God sends Abraham into Egypt. We see the same in the life of Isaac, we see the same in the life of, of Jacob, and uh, we see God preserving Israel in Egypt, and ultimately God sends Israel into Egypt to preserve them. Hallelujah. There are times that God sends you into places just to preserve his plan for your life, just to preserve his dream for your life. You, re, you got to know that God has a dream for your life. God has a plan for your life and God will use anything to preserve his plan for your life. Hey, 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 how are you guys? Thank you again for joining us on this Thursday live broadcast. We, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. And this week, is, is, it's, it's been a great week for us. And uh, though we are, we are in a season of just mourning one of our fathers who, was, who went to be with the Lord on uh, Father's Day, and that is my wife's uh, father, that is Teresa. And uh, it's, it's been a tough week for us. And we are glad that God has given us the opportunity. The burial is tomorrow. So let's, let's remember the family and everyone that is gathering in that compound today with a word of prayer and just pray for them. Just Let's just take time and pray for Teresa and their family right now as they go through these hard times. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you 
for your servant trees, O oh God. We thank you for our Father, O oh Jehovah God, who has come, come to be with you. You have called him home. We pray that in the name of Jesus that you will bless these lives, O oh God. I pray that, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, you will comfort them where they need comfort. We thank you for mom. We cover her by the blood of Jesus. We pray that everything that concerns them shall be fulfilled, O oh God. We pray that you will comfort them. Every arrangement that concerns tomorrow's burial, O oh God. Or we pray that in the name of Jesus, that they will bury in, a, in, 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 in your grace, O oh God. That you will give them grace even in this time, O oh God. We thank you for the entire family, the extended family, O oh God. We pray that in the name of Jesus, you will bless each and every one of them and comfort their hearts. Thank you for the service that your servant did on the face of the earth, that he served you, that he fought well, O oh God. We pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that let that mantle fall upon one of his children, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And somebody say, Amen. Say a bigger, better, Amen. Well, today we are beginning a new series into the book of Nehemiah. Every time we begin to look into the word and we begin to look into these Bible characters, we gain to understand or we gain to learn from their walk with God because these men are not just myths in the house of God. In the Bible, they are people that literally walked with God. They are people that literally had a walk with God. And Nehemiah is not an exceptional. Nehemiah is a man that walked with God in the hard times. It is important for us to see the setting of when this book was written. The book of, was written about 100 or 1,000 years after Moses. After, after Moses died, it takes 100 years for the book of Nehemiah to happen. And it takes 400 years before Jesus for this book to happen. So it is a very strategic book in the, in the Bible because it's a book that is written at the time that the children of Israel were in captivity in, in, in Babylon. They were arrested. They were taken from their home in Jerusalem. The Bible says that, that if you read the story, if you follow the story, the Babylonians invades the land of, of, of Jerusalem. They invade the, the land of Judah. And then they, they destroy the temple, the temple that Solomon built. They destroyed everything and they leave the, the, the land in ruin. And then they carry the entire city into captivity in the land of Babylon. So Jerusalem becomes like a ghost town. It becomes like a town that has been invaded by Corona and then now they have, they have done a lockdown. You see the picture, the, 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 the pictures of cities that are empty cities the, the the only difference is that these cities that are empty right now they are in good condition but jerusalem was empty and in ruin hallelujah even the the the, the walls were broken the walls stood for protection of the land all these things were broken and and there were israelites that were living in uh, in babylon they were about their number they were numbering in millions of them millions and millions of them who are in captivity and when uh, when uh, the time comes for this book to be written this man who is called uh, nehemiah the one whose book this book is attributed on or the name is attributed to him the name nehemiah simply means the comfort of Judah, the comfort of Judah. It's important for us to know that the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah points to the Holy Spirit. Because if you study the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah simply means help. God helps his people from captivity. And when Jesus comes, he says that he will send us another comforter. He will send us help. And this help will come in the form of the Holy Spirit. So when you look at the life of Nehemiah, when you look at the life of Ezra, these two men are a picture of the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is going to do to the church. Hallelujah. What the Holy Spirit, the first thing that the Holy Spirit is going to do is, is, is going to help us. 
in the book of Nehemiah and he's going to comfort us. He's going to comfort Jeho the comfort of... In fact, the Bible calls the Nehemiah simply means the comfort of Jehovah. The comfort of Jehovah to his people. Hallelujah. Because God does not need comfort. It is us who needs comfort. It is the comfort of God to the people whom he has called. To you and to me. And when we begin to look into the book of, 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 of Nehemiah, we have to know that where Nehemiah is. Nehemiah was uh, a well-to-do well guy. He was, he was, you say we can say he was rich because you cannot serve a king when you are poor. He was one of the king's, king's uh, cupbearer. Before the king eats anything, he was the one to test them first. So when, when he comes into a season before the king, this, this, this is a guy who appeared before the king of Persia each and every day. He appeared each and every day before him. So it means that he was a man of authority. He was a man who was well to do. He was well off. He was a man who lacked nothing because he was always in the presence of the king. And today I just want to read a few verses out of this uh, this chapter one we're just doing a, an introduction into who this this man is and before we go into reading the bible it you have to we have to know that the book of nehemiah has four basic themes it has four basic themes it or it's divided into four basic parts the first part is in in uh, nehemiah chapter one and chapter two where he talks about the Nehemiah rebuilds Jerusalem or returns to Jerusalem. It, it talks about the return. Hallelujah. The first part of this book talks about the return. The return. The return. And then the second part of it talks about the walk of Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem being rebuilt. The walls being rebuilt. The, the second part is now where they are taking their time to rebuild. First part is the return. Second part is the rebuild. And then the third part is the rebuilding of the laws because Nehemiah comes to a place where now he rebuilds the laws that were, 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 were destroyed because it comes to a time where people were, were, were are living against the Ten Commandments, the laws that God did put in place and then the first and the final part that we will look into is the future activities of Nehemiah the future ne activities of Nehemiah and as we start it's very important for us to get to the, a little bit to the end of Nehemiah Nehemiah ends his book by telling God that I tried hallelujah what a statement to end your life I was listening to Catherine Kuhlman so many times she always says that the first thing that she is going to meet God and tell God is that, Lord, I tried. Lord, I tried. And that is how Nehemiah ends his book. But how does he begin the book? The Bible says in, in Nehemiah chapter 1, we will read a couple of verses, and uh, we, we, we just find out what the first thing that this guy does when he hears what he is about to hear. In verse 2, the Bible says, Hanani, one of the brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnants that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They say to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The walls of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Well, I had these things, Nehemiah says, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, O God, Lord of heavens, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who who love him and obey his commandment. Let your ears be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayers your servant is praying before you today. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let, Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray that in the name of Jesus as we begin this 
journey into the book of, of, of Nehemiah, that Lord, you will speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let somebody say Amen. As we have said, Jerusalem was in ruin. And uh, there the, the are remnants that comes out of Jerusalem. And they come to Pasha where Nehemiah is. And when Nehemiah meets these men, Nehemiah begins to question them of what is happening back home. How is home? How is home? And it's, it's, it's in a manner of how so many of us always behave. When you receive a visitor, maybe somebody from home, right now Nairobi is on lockdown. And, and when, when, when people who come out of this city and when they go back into their villages, they, they are asked, how is home? How, how is Nairobi? How are people there? And the report that Nahani, Hanani brings to Nehemiah was not good because he comes to tell Nehemiah that the people there are disgraced and the land is destroyed and the walls are destroyed. And when Nehemiah gets the bad report, it is important for us to get to know what Nehemiah does. What do you do when you get bad news concerning your life, concerning your surrounding? Right now, it is like we, we, we are in this time, in this time, right here, in the time of Nehemiah, where things were not going well. These guys were in a captivity. They were in a, in a foreign land. They were in a land where it was not their own. It was not their own land. They were in captivity. There were people who were, who were caught Maybe some of them were caught young. They take 70 years in captivity. Some of these guys were born in captivity. Some of these guys only, the life that they knew was the life in Persia, in Babylon. They had no idea about, about Jerusalem. So when, when they hear, when, when, uh, when uh, Nehemiah hears that the, the city of his fathers lies in ruins, that thing hits him hard. That thing hits him hard. And we, as we have talked about Nehemiah, Nehemiah simply means the comfort of Jehovah to his people. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the comforter, that you, I will give you another comforter. When the comforter hears about the ruins, about the, lo, lo, the, 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 the way the people are lost in the land, then he gets it its own priority. He gets his, his own priority first to go to God. Hallelujah. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit our intercessor so that when he, he needs to come to a place where he comforts you, he has to go to God on your behalf. He goes to God on your behalf and that is exactly what this man does. This is the first step that we have to gets to learn about Nehemiah. Nehemiah receives bad news. Nehemiah receives bad news concerning his land. Nehemiah receives bad news concerning where his ancestors, his fathers have been buried. And the first thing that Nehemiah does is that he goes to God. Hallelujah. What do you do when you find bad news? What do you do? What, what, what is the first reaction that comes into your mind when you find out that something bad has happened? Do you begin to complain? Do you begin to murmur? Do you begin... Nehemiah would have asked who destroyed the, 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 the place? Who has distressed the people? But the first thing that he does is that he goes to God in prayer and in fasting. We know that Nairobi, and we know that our city, our nation, our nation is in ruin spiritually. And there are reports of things that are happening around that don't glorify God, meaning that the walls of a nation is, is broken. The walls of family is broken. The walls of a society is broken. But, and when the walls of a society is broken, then it is time for us to go to God. Hallelujah. It is time for us, the Holy Spirit that lives in us, the Holy Spirit who is the comforter, who lives in us, the comforter of Jehovah, who represents Jehovah in our spirit. He first of all goes to God in prayer. 
and instructs us to go into a time of fasting and prayer. And I thank God because there is a movement of fasting and prayer that is rising in the city. There is a, fast, uh, a movement of fasting and prayer that is, uh, that is rising in this land. That people are fasting. People have begun again to fast. People have begun again to seek God concerning our families, concerning our lives, concerning our children. Because what is happening around... What has happened to the, the to the to the to the walls of our society will not be rebuilt until we find a movement of people that will take time in seeking God, a people that will take time in fasting and prayer and waiting on God for the sake of what has happened. Hallelujah. When you receive bad news, what do you do? When you receive bad news, what do you do? It is important for you to examine your heart, to examine yourself. Where do I go when I receive when I receive that my dad is sick, when I receive that my mom is sick, when I receive that my account is dry? What do I do first when I receive that my child has been involved in some other issues in life? What is it that I do first? There is a report that came and they say that over 4,000 girls who are teenagers are getting pregnant. What do you do as a society? One of the first things that you have to do is not even to go on Facebook and make posts about it. Go to God. And I, when, when, when uh, Nehemiah receives the news, he goes to God and reminds God about his promises. If you read about, about the, the, what is prayer in the book of in, in, in verse 8, he goes to God and he reminds God about his covenant with Moses. Hallelujah. Remind God about the covenants. When the city, when the revival was alive in this city, in the 70s, what God did through his servants, people like Joe Kyle, people like all these guys that God used, Evans Murima, these guys, we go back to God and we remind him, God, what you did through people like evangelist Wyrimu Nelson in the 80s. We come to God and we tell him that remember what you have done. Hallelujah. Remember what you have done in the past. And that is what we need to do as a body of believers that believe in Jesus Christ. It is not bad news. It is not good news what is happening around. But we can turn things around. We can turn things around. It is time for us to come to a place where we gather together and begin to pray and begin to fast. On this, on this uh, 56th day of this fast, we are just praying for this city. We are just praying for our young ones. We are praying for our young people that may God touch their lives, that may God heal their hearts where there is emptiness, that the Holy Spirit will come and comfort them and draw them back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is the, 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 the important thing that we ought to do, and that is to pray. It is very, very... Pray is not just a time of, of wasting your hours, bubbling things that you don't know, but prayer is touching God concerning your own life concerning your own promises there are promises that have been broken and the enemies we see when that wall is broken the enemies have access into the city and when when that happens then there the, the, is there is there is not going to be any comfort and i want to finish today's uh, today's discussion with this that there the, the, the are there are four things that uh, happens in uh, in, in Jerusalem that we have to understand from the word go. The, the first thing that happens in Jerusalem is that the nation was destroyed. The nation was destroyed. The, 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 the city, Jerusalem, was conquered by the Babylonians and they destroyed the land, captured the people, sent them into captivity. Hallelujah. Nobody was left. And uh, the second thing that we have to know is that the people of Jerusalem was in ruins and the people of Israel were in exile for about 70 years. 70 years these guys were in exile. Keep these things at the back of your minds because we're going to be revisiting them as we continue. The third thing that we have to do, we have to know is that after exile, they settled in Babylon. When they were sent into exile, 
just like in the book of Exodus, in the book of, 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 of Nehemiah, they do the same thing. When they were exiled, they go into Babylon and they settled there and they multiply. They be, they be, because now they become millions of them. They become millions of them. And then the first thing that we are going to check and we are going to discuss and look into as we look into this book is that the opportunity to go back home came through the man Nehemiah. An opportunity to, for them to go back home arose. But it's important for us to notice, and we will discuss more in length, that only 50 or 2%, or 2% of the entire population of Israel decided to go back, which was about 50,000 people out of millions of people. Hallelujah. There was a need for them to go back home, but only 2% decided to go back home. I want you to keep with us as we continue in this discussion. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting as we look into Nehemiah. And uh, today I want you just to know the first thing that you got to do in your life is how you react to bad news. The, the, the best way for you to react to bad news is to go to God in prayer, through fasting and prayer. They've told you that you have cancer. Don't curse. Don't curse. Go to God, pray about it. Remind God that you say that you are the God who heals. They have told you that you are bankrupt. Never fret. Don't cry about it. Don't go and begin to talk about things that you should have done. They have told you that this has happened in your life. They have told you that you, you are no more employed. The, the, the employer has terminated your contract because of corona. Don't fret. Go to God in prayer. Because when the city is in ruins, the best thing that you can do as a child of God, the best thing that you can do is to go to God in prayer. We are in a season of fasting and prayer. And if, if there is a challenge that is happening in your life, I dare you, my friend, to join us. Even if it's for one day, two days, three days, four days. And just fast and pray. For that situation. You want to make a major decision. Don't make it until you fast and pray. We're going to look into this book and see why did this guy first of all make the decision to go and fast and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember again we are looking into the book of Nehemiah. And this is just an introduction. The first part of this book, this, this discussion. And, and as you... You begin to follow this book with us. I want you to know that God wants to change your life. God wants to rebuild the walls in your life. There are some broken walls in your life that has allowed the enemy access to come in. There are some broken walls in your family that has allowed access to the enemy to come in. I want to encourage you that it is time to rebuild it. Church of Jesus Christ, Lyston Church, it is time for us to rebuild the walls of our cities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your people today. As they make a decision, O oh God, to begin to rebuild walls in their ruined own personal cities, that Lord, you will touch them, that Lord, you will reveal yourself to him, them, O oh God. Be their comforter in the name of Jesus. Be their God. Help them in prayer. An intercession hallelujah i know that god will help us in this season as we we do this study this is our first first uh, study of, of an entire book just as a church and we are going to do this to the end the book of nehemiah until the end and i want to make uh, just as an announcement to you we are going to have a eight day we are celebrating our second anniversary we are celebrating our second anniversary and we are planning an online conference for about eight days it's going to last from a sunday to a sunday i believe and it's going to be a eight day we are inviting men of god that have walked with god one of the men that we are inviting is a man that went through the 90 days so it, it's something that is possible. It's something that has been done before. 
So as he, as he comes to minister to us, we'll tap into the grace that he received from God during that time. And uh, we, we have so a lineup of men that, that God has, has been using in, in this nation, in the nations, in Africa entirely. And, and, and we pray that God will speak to your heart. We don't want to reveal the names yet. The poster will be out there very soon. And we will be doing the services both at 3 and also at 8 in the night. Just after you have watched the news, the bad news that happens in, in our land. Just tune, come back to this page and we will give you the good news. The Jesus news. The God news. Hallelujah. There is a God news that you need to hear. So after you have heard all the news that happens at 7, we are going to give you an opportunity to, to hear God's news at 8, so that when you go back to listen to the other news at 9, you will already be filled with faith. I'm telling you, it's going to be a very exciting time. We are, we are so much excited about our second anniversary. It's not been by might, it's not been by power, but it's been by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's going to be an online service. We are not going to gather as per the regulations of the government. We are not going to gather here, but we are going to have online services. Hallelujah. So make sure you like, you share, and then you'll be part of this that God is going to do here. The poster will be up by latest by the end of the week. May God bless you. And have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Giving is a partnership with God. When we worship Him with what He has blessed us with, we make possible the expansion of His kingdom in our community. 2 Corinthians 9.11 will be enriching every way to be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. At Light and Church, we give in the spirit of generosity to God. There is nothing we need He has withheld from us. You can participate with us right now in worshiping God through your substances. This is possible through our Lipa 9 Pesa by Goods account number 590631. Thank you for your generosity.